This is really funny. A lot of people says, I never knew what a real bagel was. Now I know. I was selling them in the farmer's market, and this lady was saying, there's no way I'm paying $2 for a bagel. You didn't put anything on it. And it was beautiful. Her friend goes, you don't know what a bagel is. I'm buying it. Shut up. She buys a bagel, gives it to her friend right in front of me. The lady goes, oh my God, I never had anything like this. And her friend says, see, now you know what a bagel is. I don't mind talking about my ingredients because if somebody wants to try to do what I, I do, there's, there's 20 bagel recipes on the internet. My thing is the spring water, forget the filtered water and everything else. We're just going to buy spring water. And then the other thing that sets me apart that I know of is the dough conditioner. There's something called dough conditioner that keeps a bagel soft all day. It's no good because it's chemicals. Slice open a bagel, preferably a, a warm, fresh one, and give it a whiff. And then you slice open one that has the Puritos. That's the main conditioner that they use. Puritos, it's called. And you can smell the chemicals. And a lot of people have asked me, how come your bagel smells different? I said, it's not what you're smelling, it's what you're not smelling. You're so used to smelling chemical bread. Because all bread has chemicals in it. So I stripped the formula down to the common denominator, which I found out eventually was the original bagel. I only have five ingredients. So the first thing we do, we got our mixer, bowl nice and clean, water first in the bowl, and then salt, and then yeast, and malt syrup is very important. A lot of places use brown sugar or white sugar, no malt at all, but that that wasn't the same texture of the dough because that malt has a real thickness to it, like honey. It's not as sweet as honey. It's got kind of a bittersweet taste. But it, in the end product, you can't really taste the malt. You just taste that slight sweetness. Then I measure out my flour and I put the flour into the wet mix and we mix that for about five minutes on a low speed. Then I crank it up to a medium speed and the dough really starts coming together. Once I've got it mixed to the point where I'm comfortable on the feel. A lot of this has to do with feel, because this is artisan work. It's not like you just measure this, measure that, measure this, measure that. Some days, according to the atmosphere in the room or the temperature, you have to put in a little less water, or a little more water, fine, fine tune adjustments. But you can always tell by the hand. So now we take it out of the mixer and uh, pull the dough, 44 pound dough is what I wind up with. We sit it on the table after about 10 minutes or 15 minutes, then it's ready for slicing. And we take out long strips of dough and put it down and roll it up and form it over, over the hand and put it on a board. Uh, different people do it different ways. I put two dozen on a board. And then we sit it inside the proofing cabinet where it continues to raise. Proofing is very important. When I say proof, I mean raise the dough. That's the term. Like on a cool day, it's gonna take a long time for the dough to proof. On a warm day or in the summertime, they proof right away. They're proofing in a half hour. And depending on the proof time, get it into the refrigerator. And that's when the, the raising of the dough, the proofing stops when the refrigerator takes it down to 39, 38 degrees. Because at 70 degrees, it's still raising. At 60, it's still raising. At 50, it's still raising, but slowly. As the temperature goes down, the raising slows down until it gets into the 30s, and then it doesn't raise anymore. Then the next day, we take those out and boil them and bake them. You always want to have them ready a day, or even two days in advance. We're taking them cold out of the refrigerator. The bagels are now 38 degrees coming out of the refrigerator. They're going into the boiling water and you want really rolling boil. You know, not just like tepid water. It's gotta be a rolling boil or the, the shine doesn't come right. They, they look very dull. So when they come out of the water, they're gonna go upside down on the board. Here you have your typical bagel board. 
let me show you how this is. This is a burlap strapped to a, a two by four, regular two by four. They're gonna go upside down on the board like this. And they're gonna bake for approximately five minutes until this side is dry. So the reason they're upside down is because when they're finished baking here, we turn them off onto the stones and then you have the thing right side up. When we pull them out of the oven with the peel, that big board is called a peel, we're peeling them off the stones, um, they're right side up and they look like the finished product. That's something the old timers always ask that question, you're boiling and baking? And I point right to the back, I said, you see that boiling water back there? Oh yeah, he's boiling and baking, they're putting it out to their friends. He boils and bakes, that's what they want to know. You know, a lot of people say, why don't you grab and go? Why don't you have stuff ready? Well, it's not what we do. The reason a lot of people love us is because they know it's being made fresh and people don't mind waiting when they know they're getting something fresh. And that's what we do. It takes a little more time, but obviously it's working. Mm -hmm.